C2 capture and utilization and storage is a key technology to mitigate C2 emissions from combustion processes. Carbonate looping is a very efficient and environmentally sound capture technology. This technology can be employed for fossil fire power plants as well for industrial processes like cement and steel production plants. It can be easily retrofitted to existing plants. So the possibilities of CO2 capture technologies, there are three categories. One is a post-combustion, so that means fuel and air will be fired in a combustion unit in a furnace and CO2 is captured at the end of the process. This technology can be retrofitted to existing units. Pre-combustion is a further category. Pre-combustion C2 capture, this works in the uh, field of IGCC, so that means Integrated Gasification Combined Cycle Unit. Uh, the CO2 will be captured after the gasification of the fuel and uh, can be further utilized. In the end, uh, hydrogen will be fired in a gas turbine. So, if you look at the post-combustion uh, technology, a lot of the flue gas consists of nitrogen, around 70%. Therefore, the idea to separate nitrogen before it comes to combustion, and this, uh, this comes from oxyfuel technology. Oxyfuel means there's a firing system with uh, technical pure oxygen, and uh, nitrogen is uh, not uh, transported, it's not directed into the combustion process. So that means at the end, the flue gas consists of CO2 and water, and water can be very easily uh, separated by condensing, and then CO2 can be further utilized. Carbonate looping, this is in the field of uh, post combustion technology. The process consists of two units, two reactors, which are circulated through dice bed reactors. In blue color, the carbonator is shown. Uh, at the bottom, flue gas from a power plant or cement plant or any other uh, combustion uh, unit will be directed into the carbonator. The temperature of the entering uh, flue gas can be any, any value. It can be ambient temperature, it can be several hundred degrees, it doesn't matter. Because uh, if it comes to the reaction between CO2 and uh, calcium oxide, this is a highly exothermal uh, reaction. That means uh, calcium oxide plus CO2 forms a calcium carbonate, and this is, uh, this is associated with a release of uh, heat. That means the temperature will be higher in the carbonator and the optimum uh, process temperature for the reaction is uh, 650 degrees Celsius. So it's important to control this temperature to keep it at a level of 650 degrees Celsius. Then uh, CO2 is, uh, is fixed in a very efficient way and uh, decarbonized flue gas uh, will be released from the carbonator. That means calcium oxide is a vehicle to uh, capture CO2 and CO2 is transported in form of a calcium carbonate to the second reactor. Second reactor in the yellow color is a calciner. The temperature has to be increased from 650 to 900 degrees Celsius. At a temperature level of 900 degrees Celsius, CO2 will be released and uh, there's a yield again of calcium oxide and uh, calcium oxide is recycled back to the carbonator. So to uh, reach this temperature and, and to uh, have the reaction uh, enthalpy which is uh, endothermal in the calcineiner we need uh, heat input. So this heat input can be done by a direct firing of a fuel but this fuel has to be fired with uh, oxygen because we do not want to have uh, nitrogen at uh, the outlet of the calciner. That means if we fire uh, the calciner with uh, oxygen and uh, 
fuel at the end we will have a CO2 and a water steam and the CO2 can be uh, further treated and uh, utilized. Uh, so it's a closed uh, looping of a solid material but we have a degradation in the reactivity of the, of the calcium oxide that means we have to bring in a certain amount of uh, fresh uh, limestone so-called makeup to the process if we do a balance, that means with uh, 68 kilogram of uh, fresh uh, limestone, we are able to capture 1,000 kilogram or one ton of uh, CO2. And in the end, we have some spent material consisting of uh, ash and deactivated uh, limestone. This can be further utilized in flue gas desulfurization plant or uh, cement. Uh, production unit so this is a very uh, valuable uh, feed for the for the cement uh, industry this is a setup of a model of a cfb unit that means the flue gas if we look at the carbon looping process is entering from the bottom so the solid material will be fluidized there's a very intensive mixing and reaction between the flue gas and uh, solid material, that means CO2 will react with calcium oxide forming calcium carbonate. At the outlet of the reactor, the solid material will be separated in a cycle and the decarbonized uh, flue gas is uh, leaving the reactor at the top of the cycle. Then there's a down cover at the end of the cycle, the so-called uh, loop seal, and then uh, the loop uh, uh, leads the solid uh, material back to the riser of the circulating fluidized uh, bed system. Here you can see the setup of the 1 megawatt unit. The flue gas is entering from the bottom. There's an intensive mixing of uh, flue gas and calcium oxide forming uh, calcium carbonate, which is uh, still solid material. And the solid material will be separated in the cyclone. Via the down camera and loop seat is transported back to the uh, to the bottom of the reactor. So it sets a looping system and the decarbonized flue gas is leaving the system at the top of the cycle. So it's possible to use uh, coal as a fuel to the system and it's also possible to use uh, biomass. For biomass we have a further line. As you can see here, that's a line for biomass and there's a wood heavy valve that the biomass will be transported into the uh, reactor system.